interesting yeah. because I was trying to convey and intimate to you guys throughout the fight that I didn't know if Carl Snowden wasn't doing a lot to finish, you guys. One of the things you have to remember is when we're sitting here, we're watching the fight, but we're not keeping track of time. The judges have a stopwatch on the fight, and obviously this is a split decision, so this was a very close fight that could have gone either way. But the judges look at the time during the fight to, to dictate which person may have accumulated accumulated efforts to finish, accumulated... And definitely the, the effort to finish from Takashi was probably what but gave them the, the idea of giving him the victory. I believe. Henzo, I believe so. you seemed a little shocked though. Are you happy with that judge's decision? Yeah, no, definitely. I would give to Newton that fight. Well, yes. in the end, it was Daiju Takase surprising some, but uh, he picks up the split decision victory over Carlos Newton here at Bushido Volume 3. Kariki is 6'1", 220 pounds, his debut in Pride at the age of 37. Akira Shoji is 30, he's 5'8", 209 pounds. For him, this is a landmark event, his 20th appearance in Pride Fighting Championships, the most by any fighter. I'm a little bit biased for this one since uh, Shoji's my fighter. We've got all the AMC guys in the corner there. Um, Shoji's really ready for this fight. It's good to see him fighting again. I had the pleasure to fight him on the first Pride. Yes, sir, right. did in an entertaining third. That was minutes. unbelievable. Tough Japanese. If you had someone with the heart of a samurai, that's the guy that you must be talking about. You helped him make a good first impression here for the Japanese fans. Mr. Pride, Akira Shoji, they touch gloves and we are underway. Now watch for some low kicks and a big overhand right. There it is. That's it. The fight is over. Akira Shoji sends him to the ground. Soccer kick to the head. Akira Shoji wants to make a statement. Hammer strikes Ben. He's already cut him off, and there you have it. Happy anniversary to Akira Shoji. His 20th appearance in a Pride event is a victorious one. A Wait very a impressive time. victory. Very impressive. Completely Shoji. domination. We've, we've really been working on the boxing with Shoji and uh, made off for him this time. In near record time, 18 seconds of the first round, Akira Shoji destroys Kamakai Riki and Shoji celebrates a victory here, the 20th appearance. That's hard to believe, isn't it, Hensel? The guy has a reputation in Japan and what a way to enjoy his 20th appearance in Pride. Definitely. It's good to see it. All the bad moments that he had in Pride. Here we go, overhand right, Shoji's got a very powerful one. Just missed with that one, but this one was on the button. And you know, it's only fitting, Matt, that with the victory, Shoji is now a 500 fighter, building his record to 9, 9, and 2 here at Pride. And really, you know what? A record in MMA really doesn't tell the whole story. Shoji has taken on a virtual who's who in mixed martial arts. Yes, well, anybody that took on the guy sitting next to me and survived is uh, definitely a tough guy. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. <laughs> and it's important to say, like, every time Shoji had a bad day in Pride, uh -huh. he was actually met match with guys like Sam Shoes. Yes. A 7 2. Akira Shoji thanking Tamaka Riki for uh, accepting the fight with him tonight. And he now is telling the crowd that this was my 20th appearance at a Pride event. And this is a dream come true. Thank you again. So uh, he celebrates his 20th victory, thanking the crowd for their entire support throughout the years. Mr. Pride enjoying his 20th appearance, a record here for Pride Fighting Championships, a victorious one for Tamakai Riki. 
He'll have to go back to the drawing board if he would like to continue in his very, MMA very career. Very, very impressive victory. That happens normally when you are under the tutelage of our man here. But you guys have the luck to have him Thank you. as your commentator tonight. Former UFC heavyweight champion Josh Barnett, a part of the entourage. Top fighter from Japan, Shinsuke Nakamura, also joining Akira Shoji. But he really didn't need much help tonight. Akira Shoji destroys Tamakariki and records the victory here at the Yokohama Arena. Beautiful fight. Very happy for Shoji. One of the nicest guys. There he Coming comes. Up. Congratulations, Shoji. <laughs> Shoji is the greatest guy. Everybody loves Shoji. Yeah. Nicest guy. Very happy that he uh, decided to come to the United States and train with me. And you can see just how uh, liked and loved he is by everyone coming to the broadcast booth, so the respective uh, broadcast, the American and the Japanese, and shaking everyone's hand. And he's going to be celebrating tonight. Akira Shoji, the heart of a warrior. It's the way of the Warriors. This is Bushido. Khalid, how has training gone since your last appearance here at Pride Bushido? It's going uh, much better because I started wrestling much more than before and uh, training with my time Dion, who's really a specialist in growing fighting. And uh, I feel much more complete and much more confident for the whole uh, fighting mixed martial arts. Your opponent uh, tonight will be one of the top students of Hidehiko Yoshida in Kazuhiro Nakamura. He's also improved in his striking. Do you think this will be a stand-up war? Um, for me, actually, it doesn't matter if I go to the ground or keep the fight standing. I'm ready for everything. And how do you feel about being back in Bushido? You're here with Bushido 1. Is it another honor for you to be back here at Bushido 3? What are the thoughts of fighting back in Japan? Yeah, it's a great honor for me to be uh, fighting in fight Bushido because uh, for every fighter, it's a, it's a target. It's that what every fighter want, wants to, to do, to fight in Pride Bushido or Pride events. And why do you think that is? What makes Pride uh, so different from other uh, mixed martial arts organizations? The, quali the quality of the organization, of the show, of the whole event, it shows a lot of uh, professionalism and uh, a lot of quality of fighters and everything. Khalid De Faust is 28, he's 6'1", 203 pounds, 1-0 and zero here in Pride, coming off the victory of Bushido 1. Kazuhiro Nakamura, 25, 5'10", 215 pounds, with a record of 2-1 and one in Pride. They're coming off two wins in a row, both unanimous decisions over Dos Caras Jr. at Pride 27. And earlier, at Bushido won the victory over Daniel Gracie. And watch for uh, DeFaust to try to keep this fight standing and use his boxing skill, but watch out for the big overhand right from Nakamura. Very dangerous overhand high. right. Does and Nakamura have? After he throws it, he'll go for an inside trip to get it to the ground. It's very efficient on here. It's a way to, to do a takedown. Nakamura boxes two hours a day with Oseki Kadoebi, a world boxing champion from Japan, retired and uh, also doing the ground game with Yoshida and TK. So uh, he's becoming a very well-versed fighter, is Kazuhiro Nakamura, but he faces a huge puncher in Khalid DeFaust. You see DeFaust moving forward here. He really wants to strike. very close range. And you can see that he's not a warrior at all. That was it. Taking a page out of Randleman's book, he made the shot in through the hook, but he didn't land it. Nice uppercut delivered there by DeFaust as Nakamura quickly goes to the tight clinch. DeFaust has been working on his ground game since his Bushido debut, saying he's prepared very well for Nakamura. He hopes Nakamura will want to strike, but uh, Nakamura is looking for the trip here. Okay, now they, they went outside the rope, so they may stand them back up. It was a very efficient takedown with a headlock applied by Nakamura. Nakamura going to his judo playbook. I think playbook. they're going to stand them back up. They're, they're questioning it right now. 
And just how popular is Pride becoming worldwide? After this fight, DeFaust will be heading to Germany to make an appearance on Big Brother to promote Pride and the sport of MMA. Nakamura and DeFaust now in close quarters. These guys are both looking for the knockout. Yeah, very amazing hands. You can see on Khalid. Is that smart on Nakamura's part, however? Yeah, no that, that, that overhand right just whistled by. He has to look for that. He got to be careful with that. There goes the ankle pick attempt by Nakamura. Nice knee by Big Oh, yeah, that knee landed. He was able to land like now two he's got the knees. body lock. He's got the body lock, so. Oh, nice, put him beautiful. right in the mount. Good leverage there. Nice balance by DeFaust. Falls into the half guard there of Nakamura. DeFaust, very impressive he early on here. Back to our square by Nakamura. Now watch that he pushes the knee out of the way. He's passing the guard. Stop. Go the move. Now, is it wise for Nakamura to go for that knockout punch against the likes of DeFaust? Wouldn't it be wiser for him to try to take this to the ground? Well, that knockout punch is going to make DeFaust very nervous about the knockout punch and not able to defend the takedown as well. So I think it is a good strategy. Definitely. He has to throw those to get close. DeFaust is very dangerous on his hands. If you realize how calm he is in a close range, it's unbelievable. DeFaust tried to bridge, make a big bridge there, but that just put Nakamura into side position. Could be seeing some knee action here from Nakamura on the side, busy working on the and distributing the most, his the balance. The most amazing, if you realize, is how tough those, Jap those Japanese heads are. After their knee, he, he doesn't have a bruise. It's like you, not even a, a, a slightly redness from those couple knees that he received. He's right got the knee. I thought he was going to make the move to the full mount, and he does. Nakamura. He's mounted again. Maybe looking to see some ground and pound action now at him. Uh, Khalid DeFaust now doing a good job with his hips. Armbar, armbar. Oh, there goes the armbar attempt by Nakamura. Full extension of the arm. DeFaust trying to make it. Nice job by DeFaust. Wow. Let me tell you, this night, it's been unbelievable. Beautiful escape by the post. I'm not watching bad fights tonight. And Every that, single one. And that's inspired him, you guys. Look at Khalid the post now. A tremendous, a sublime escape from that full extent. Oh, There's a nice. stop. Beautiful right. kick. Taking a Watch pace the heel of the heel hook. Oh. That, that heel hook looked like it might have done a little damage. Khalid DeFaust is uh, becoming a superstar in the midst of this, his second like, appearance here in Pride. It looks like DeFaust is walking fine. I believe he slipped off of the heel hook rather than that, the tendon actually giving way because DeFaust is still moving fine. DeFaust has improved exponentially since Bushido won. Oh, that's the October. right hand. He landed. <laughs> Again, Nakamura should be setting up a jab or a shot just to go for the takedown if he wants to gain the advantage here because I don't think he can outpunch the likes of Khalid DeFaust. He, he's playing the game really well right now. DeFaust switching now. That's going to open him up for the overhand right. Now he's back to Roblox. Nice uppercut try. But there we go. There's the inside trip. That's the inside trip that Nakamura does really well. And Nakamura is playing the game really well because he'll punch until Khalid gets worried about the punch. Then he'll go for the takedown. Nakamura quickly moves to the half guard and now gets the full mount rather easily. Top position now for Nakamura. But we saw that the DeFaust was not in a very precarious position last time, Henzo. No, he was able to defend well down there. Hammer strike. Nakamura didn't show many skills from the mouth position. There's Stefan Leko, a member of Golden Globe. There he goes, the arm Another again. Armor. Going for the arm. Oh, he's got the leg hook, too. He got the leg this time. So it's a dangerous one. Let's see how Khalid gets out of this one. Oh, the arm's there out. Now fully extended. Is. Will he be pushed to the top? He does. Tazuhiro Nakamura. Nakamura got Tremendous arm bar submission victory over Khalid DeFaust, but what a great fight. And Khalid DeFaust, man, I predict big things for this guy. Once he gets a little more proficient on the ground, he's going to be a threat in MMA. He's yeah. very scrappy. He's very scrappy. The, the escape was great. Uh, and he didn't give up at all when he was in that arm bar until the very last minute that he could stand it. And four minutes and 45 seconds of the opening round, Kazuhiro Nakamura is definitely a star on the rise with his third consecutive victory here at Pride, lifting his trainer, his mentor, Yoshida, on his shoulders. And Yoshida, of course, will be on pay-per-view June 20th as a part of the star-studded critical countdown. 
Sakuraba and the great eight, and also the newest member of the Pride roster, Mark Hunt, from top to bottom, Critical Countdown, is going to be a show to remember. Here we go, Henzo. Here we go. You see, let me see if this was the, this was the first one that he was able to get away. So he shouldn't let him mount again because he was efficient on those arm locks. And you're right, he did give up the mount rather easily, Definitely. didn't he? Definitely, he gave the mount too easy. There he goes. This time he, he didn't make the mistake of letting the leg free. So by locking his leg, he was able to get the, his arm in a very efficient way. Uh -huh. well, he knew Khalid that's... wanted to bridge, so when he hooked that leg... Nakamura's thanking the crowd. He, he wanted to, and he's telling the crowd he wanted to engage in some striking with Kelly DeFaust. He says that he's a judo teacher in Yokohama. And he's saluting his uh, students who are in attendance tonight supporting Kazuhiro Nakamura. So his uh, Yoshida Dojo. It represented here tonight, and once again, he's thanking the crowd for their support. And man, he's becoming a quick fan favorite here in Japan. He wants to give the microphone to Yoshida. Yoshida doesn't, uh, what, or maybe he does here. Yes, Yoshida is going to be addressing the crowd. Hidehiko Yoshida and uh, Enzo Gracie. It's going to be interesting to see what Yoshida will do come June 20th, following that uh, fight with your... Uh, Definitely, he's a very tough guy, and it's good to, to, always good to watch him fighting. He had an impressive match against uh, Silva, against Vanderlei Silva, you know. He had a bad day with Royce, Royce was able to completely dominate him, but I believe it was a, a case of a stylus, styles didn't match. Okay, and in fact, they're just posing for pictures, so Yoshida not addressing the crowd. And as we take one last look at the replay here of that uh, great armbar submission by Nakamura, we want to take this opportunity to thank the always entertaining, always informative Henzo Gracie. And Henzo, we uh, know that you have to get back to the back. Uh, the dressing yeah, room to I prepare have to look team. after my little kids. And uh, we look so, forward to it. The team yeah, Gracie It's always a pleasure to be here with you guys, especially with such a good company. Henzo, it's always an honor. Good luck. Thank uh, you. Thank you, my team. brother. See you guys soon. Henzo Gracie. I'll be down here soon, though. We'll be leading Team Gracie in the battle to feature bouts tonight. Team Gracie versus Team Japan still to come here at Bushido 3. Marco, this is the uh, first opportunity you have to address your North American fans uh, following your loss to Kevin Randleman. Um, maybe tell us how you feel and what exactly happened that night. Well, I feel really good now and it was just a bad luck. It was a lucky punch from Kevin, and uh, but very soon we'll have a rematch, so I will prove my value in the ring. But uh, concerning this fight, I'm very good in good shape and I'm ready to beat. Are you wanting to make an example of your opponent tonight, Kanihara, and prove to everyone that you are still a, a major force in the sport tonight? Well, of course, this is my first fight after I lost last one. And, uh, but it's just one of the fights. Just one of the fights, that's it. In order for you to get back into title contention, what do you feel Mirko Kropop has to do? Well, I need to beat all my opponents from now on and in the future till the title fight. And uh, this time I won't miss my chance like I missed with Nogueira. Or was this going to be Nogueira or Fedor? I don't know, but I will be ready. And obviously you showed that you are a true fighter. You demanded, you wanted to get back into the ring right away. And that's why you're taking on Kenahara tonight. Of course, I wanted to, to back as soon as possible. And the first tournament, well, this is the first tournament possible after the uh, April 25. Thank you very much, Mirko, and uh, good luck tonight. Hiromitsu Kanahara is 33, 5, 10, 200 pounds with a record of 0 and 1 in pride. He's been off with a knee injury for over a year and a half, making his return tonight. Mito! 
Jorko Krokop, 29, 6'2", 228 pounds, with a record of 5'2", two and 2", in pride. For many fans, the question that begs to be asked, is this where the road to redemption begins for the Croatian sensation, who at total elimination suffered his worst defeat ever against Kevin Randleman, and if the look says anything, Matt Hume, I believe, Mirko Krokop is going to prove a point tonight or attempt to do just that against Hiromitsu Kanahara, who we know is a tough striker. Go! But is this a case of a lamb being led to slaughter? We're about to find out. Immediately tagged with a left hand. You can see Kanahara's right hand dropping when he goes to throw the kick. He's getting time. Good sprawl Easy by sprawl by Oh, he's, he's winding up that kick. Oh. Combination. Left, leg left, left hook there, and there's another one by Murko. He's really just measuring them up. There's that cruise missile of a left foot. But Kanahara, give him full credit here. If Kanahara is not able to execute his takedown, then he's in some trouble. Huh? There's a punishing left. Kanahara can take a shot. There's a left that puts him on the ropes at foot. And Mirko. Kanahar is backing away too much here. He's, he needs to go forward and put pressure on to make Mirko think about something other than trying to take Mirko's his Mirko's not going to allow him to do just that tonight. Mirko Krokop definitely refocused. Now putting those knees to the top of Kanahara's head. Right, watch out for the ground kick. Looking for that Mirko's just going to let him stand back up. Mirko Krokop wants nothing to do with the ground game. Mirko Krokop wants to send a message to everyone. Uh, he's got to throw that kick a little more powerfully than that. He's going to get answered with that straight left. Already doing damage to the right cheekbone of Kanahara. Mirko's been loading those punches up. It's a good jab. Anytime Mirko tags Kanahara, he's oh, back the knees. to the ropes. You can hear some heavy breathing there. I think that's coming from Mirko. There's a beautiful soccer kick. And man, can Kanahara take a shot. Back up again. Here we go. This is with a wild overhand right. Does Kanahara... Mirko's flat-footed here. He doesn't seem concerned at all about Kanahara's punches or kicks. He's really not throwing in combination either. He's just trying to load up and end this. Nice uppercut. Nice uppercut. Another nice uppercut was followed by a right. But Kanahara, give him full credit. He wants to exchange here with Mirko Kroka. Kanahara is swinging back now. If Kanahara can uh, throw some combinations here, get Mirko to back up a little bit. He might be able to put himself the kick in. And pushes Kanahara to the mat. And again, Mirko will just allow him to get back up to his vertical pace. Mirko looks like he's a little tired here. Nice right hand through the guard. Another nice left. And Kanahara able to weather the storm thus far. A different Mirko Krokop, yes, but one who is taking watch the knee, watch the knee. Doesn't score with that knee. Misses with the left kick. Kanahara is hanging in there. He's just not able to execute the takedown at all, though. That, that was what he had hoped he would be able to do. And now he's left with the unenviable task of standing with Mirko Krokop. Watch Mirko's right hand there. He may try to duck out and throw the kick. Or the knee. Oh, he goes for the take. down the Watch out! A little smile by Krokop. It looks like he's got some eye trouble, though. It seems he keeps blinking his right eye. Kanahara responding. And I think already in many fans' eyes, Kanahara scored a moral victory. Now Marco goes with the waist lock, Matt. Doesn't really take him down. Didn't use it for anything. I think, I think he's just showing dominance when he does that. 
Is this uh, what you expected from Mirko Krokop? I expected him to come out hard, but uh, it looks like he's, he's tired himself out a little bit. I expected more combinations from him. Nice! Oh, but back to Kanahara, absorbing all kinds of punishment now. Kanahara's got a great chin. Oh, good. Kanahara's got That's... a thick skull, two left hands. Puts him in the down position. There's a knee. Another knee. Kanahar needs to push in here. He needs to drive towards the legs. He, he'd be wise to shoot a single leg takedown instead of continuing to try the double leg takedowns. There's a stop. Mirko Krokop, methodical and dismantling Hiromitsu Kanahara. Kanahara's getting up kind of slow here. Unable to vanquish him thus far. I don't think he wants to continue, far. but he's going to. Nice left hand by Mirko. Kanahara trying to remain in the fray. Oh, good middle kick. That hurts. That hurt. Watch the, watch the kick. Kanahara absorbing a tremendous amount of punishment. Credit him for the ability to withstand this Croatian typhoon. It is typhoon season, and right now Mirko Krokop with those shots damaging Kanahara. Another left through the guard. Nice take nice down. Mirko doing some groundwork here. Goes to the mount. This is something we haven't seen from Mirko before. Goes upstairs and downstairs. Now, Mirko needs to posture himself up and make it harder for Kanahara to keep his hands locked behind his back. If Mirko, now the hands are open. If Mirko slides his knees forward, which he just did, he needs to slide him a little further forward and sit up. Then he can get some power on the punches. Now he's going for a key lock. Now he needs to dismount. Oh, no good. And a nice escape by Kanahara. Watch the kick. Oh, it's turning into a great fight here between Krokop and Kanahara. And while uh, it's one-sided, Kanahara Mirko, doing a good job. Mirko doing things surviving. we've never seen him try before, like the key lock. Now, he didn't dismount to, to do it correctly, but he's trying things that he's never done before. Three minutes left in the round. Three minutes remains in this opening ten-minute round between Krokop and Kanahara. Now watch Kanahara. For Mirko to stand up here and throw the kick to the head. He's putting the hand on the head. It looks like he's going to stay down, maybe throw some knees. He might just be getting a little rest here. Okay, now the hand's on the head. That means he's going to try to stand himself up so he can throw something. There he goes. Yep. There's another soccer kick. Another kick to the body. You can hear it reverberate throughout the Yokohama arena. Kanahara getting up very slow. How much slow. more will Kanahara be able to withstand? How much more will his corner allow him to withstand? Mirko's leaving himself exposed with that jab, but Kanahara doesn't really want to come in. For Kanahara, shades of his pride debut when his corner threw in the towel after he was being beaten by knee. current middleweight champion Vanderlei Silva at Pride 23 in November of 2002. And look at the effects of those shots by Mirko Krokop on the side of Kanahara's body. Everything Krokop does is with bad intentions. Mirko getting a rest here. I think we're going to see him rest a little bit here and then put his hand on the head and throw some knees from here like he's doing now, the little short knees. But he's, yeah, he's putting the hand on the head. That means he's going to stand up and go for the kick. There it is. Another soccer kick. So far, he's treated Kanahara's head like a piñata, but man, oh man, Kanahara. Very tough. Tough as nails, this striker from Japan. Kick and a punch now by Kanahara. But he's sent to the ropes again by Koka. Quite a power difference here. I mean, really, for the safety of the fighter, Matt, how much more of this will we be able to, to see for Kanahara's sake, his welfare? I mean, sure he can take a punch, but these have got to be traumatic shots that he's taking. They're calling time now. They're going to check Kanahara. Make sure he's okay. 
Well, I don't think he's okay by any means, but... Uh, well, he's, he's taken some shots. Uh, he's very tired. Um, I'm sure those shots have, have accumulated some damage on him, but he hasn't taken anything that, that has really hurt him that would take him out of the fight yet. Once again, of course, here at uh, Pride Fighting Championship, safety always paramount, and uh, the referee doing the right thing has allowed the medical staff to check on Kenna Harris cut. The, the, the doctors here are going to check a lot of things on Kanahara here. They're, they're going to check his eyes, um, check his reactions, and make sure that he's really okay to go back out there. And if he's not, they won't let him go out. Now this break for Mirko may uh, may not be well for may not do well for Kanahara because if he does go back out, Mirko's going to be a little fresher. Well, the fans are applauding because the fight will resume. Kanahara in the Coliseum. Mirko Krokop right now, the lion and Krokop. Nice kick there by Kanahara, showing that he's still active. See Kanahara's hands are open and forward. That means he really doesn't want to get into punches. He wants to get his hands in the way of Mirko's punches. But that will open him up to that middle kick from Prokop. <laughs> Mirko in kind of a wrestler's cradle position, trying to tip him over. Gave that up. Now he's going back to that. He's posting himself up. Big kick coming. Couldn't quite get it. Well, Mirko's M.O. is obvious, and it's typical. There we go. Dramatic stop at the bell. Could have timed it any better. Mirko Krokop going 10 minutes. And more like Hiromitsu Kanahara going 10 minutes with Mirko Krokop. And I'm wondering if this is just Mirko Krokop's way of saying, okay, well... I just want to get back in the ring, show everybody that I'm okay following the defeat to Kevin Randleman. Get some work in here. A lot of people probably didn't think Kanahara would last this long, but he's, he's, done, he's done well here and just uh, hanging in there. He hasn't been able to mount anything really against Mirko, but with Mirko tiring out, if uh, Kanahara's corner can get him to move forward, to just pull something out of his gut and throw something big, he may be able to pull off a Kevin Randall, and that's his only real hope right here is just to try to throw something big that connects while uh, Mirko's tired and drops There's a scoring shot by Kenahara. He's asking Mirko to bring it. You see those open hands again by Kanahara. Beautiful jab followed by the kick. Those, those open hands are what they call in Muay Thai stop hands. You want to get those in front of your opponent's hands so that they can't effectively punch at you and you can go into the clinch. Now, he may have watched Kevin Randleman do that because when Randleman closed the distance, he did exactly that. Beautiful stomp there by Krokop. Kanahara, his resume, impressive, holding victories over the likes of Dave Manet, Valentine Overeem, and Jeremy Horn in Rings Japan. He's been in there with the likes of Matt Hughes, Ricardo Arona, Antonio Rodrigo Noguera, and Mario Sperry, and now giving Mirko Krokop. Now, Kanahar is backing away again. He's very tentative. Are you surprised that Krokop has been unable to terminate Kanahara thus far? Well, Kanahara is a tough guy. He's and he, like you said, the names that you mentioned, he's beating. He's beaten some very good fighters. He's a very tough guy. Well, with those shots, I mean, a lesser fighter would have been finished a long time ago, and that is definitely credit to Kanahara. And his ability, his pain tolerance, is unbelievable. It's a good name. There's, there's a big beautiful name. Man, it almost seems like it has no effect right now at Kanahara. It, that one hurt him. You saw him wobble. Now, but he's right back into the swing of things. It's not like he's stunned. It's like that old slogan of a long ago, Kanahara taking a lick and keeping oh, he's trying on to choke. In here. Mirko's going for the side choke. If Kanahara can drop his elbow just a little bit more, you get it. Now Mirko should dismount from here. 
it's probably hard for kind of hard to breathe, but the blood supply is not cut off to the head. He doesn't have the arteries on both sides of the neck squeezed off. So Kanahar is not going to pass out. You can see him saying, no, I'm not giving up to the referee. The referee will, will continue to check and watch. And now, now he's out of danger. Now, if Mirko squeezed really hard, he could have gassed himself a little more there. But Kanahar needs to, needs to either reverse this position or get back to the feet. And I don't think he's really excited about getting back to the feet right now. So he's just hanging on. Interesting evidence here that with Prokop in the full mount, maybe now we'll see no Kanahara able to buck the hips. Getting his back away, but watch it. out. Escapes and good job there by Kanahara as Mirko Prokop unable to do much on the ground. Oh, nice middle kick. Kanahara very tough though. Gives one back. Prokop with a jack through the guard. Mirko's hands are down at, you know, drop down below his waist. Kanahara should just try to throw a bomb on him. There's the single leg, turn the corner, if he turns the corner. Nice kick there by Prokop, but really that has been his only Offensive arsenal have been those kicks. And Mirko tried to pass the guard there. He's obviously been working on ground fighting. And he wants to showcase that, but again, not much happening when he is on the ground in offensive position other than the knee strikes when he was in mount, unable to do anything against Kanahara. Three minutes remaining. And I wonder, fans at home, MMA pundits, how would they rate this performance thus far by Mirko Krokop coming off the most shocking and biggest Here goes the big kick career. again. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Kanahara, of course, really just being beamed to a pulp by Krokop. That is, there's no doubt in anyone's mind who's winning this fight. But again, is, is this what Mirko Krokop wanted to do? I, I don't think this is what Mirko wanted to do. I think he wanted to uh, make an exclamation and come back and get a big knockout quickly. But this might be the thing that Mirko needs. If, if he came back and got a quick knockout, then he really wouldn't know what he needs to work on, where he's at. But he's going through a tough fight here, and uh, I'm sure it'll give him a lot of things to work on before he comes back the next time. And once you've been knocked out like Krokop was, I think you are going to be tentative subconsciously. And his... Uh, he doesn't seem tentative not here. Not tentative, but he's not as aggressive as but he has been usually he's, either. He's flat-footed and he's not putting combinations together, which which means that he probably didn't uh, believe his opponent was going to put up as much of a fight as he has. I think Koka may be cognizant of the fact that, hey, anybody can come up with a punch at any given time and maybe yeah. respecting Kanahara now a little too much as well. That, that may be in the back of his mind. That, you know, that happens when fighters come back from a knockout uh, too soon. But Kanahara, look at him. I mean, remaining, standing, still attempting the kick. 30 seconds remaining. Let's see if Kanahara tries to turn it on and make something happen here. Good uppercut, but Kanahara's fighting back. It's a good knee by Mirko. The punishment that Kanahara has been able to withstand is short of incredible, man. This guy has been a warrior. It's the way of the war has Bushido. No doubt a moral victory for Hiromitsu Kanahara lasting 15 minutes with Mirko Krokop. There's no doubt about who won that fight, but uh, Fans of Kanahara may feel that, uh, like you said, that is a moral victory for Kanahara just to be standing at the end of this fight. It's interesting that Kanahara wanted to fight Krokop in the first round of the heavyweight tournament. Never got that opportunity, but um, survived 15 minutes with the Croatian sensation here tonight. Well, that knee just missed. And I wonder, prior to the knockout, maybe, again, would that knee have missed? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't seem as, as though Merkel was as crisp as we have seen him prior no. to the knockout of the hands of Randleman. He, he definitely wasn't. And, uh, you know, I don't know why that is. Only only Mirko knows why that is. Um, but he, he was flat-footed tonight, and he wasn't putting together combinations. And again, he, he came back very soon after his <laughs> knockout. Three weeks to the day. He wanted to get right back up on the horse. Really? The end result never in doubt 
Mirko Krokop with the unanimous decision victory over a tremendous effort from Hiromitsu Kanahara simply to survive and take the amount of punishment that he did, Matt. Yeah, valiant, valiant effort by Kanahara. And uh, I'm sure Mirko is disappointed with his effort, but like I said, um, he's gonna know what he needs to do next time to come out better. And uh, Mirko wanted to be back in here this soon. Um, he's got the heart of a champion, and uh, I'm sure we'll see a better Mirko the next time he steps in the ring. So it's a unanimous decision, Mirko Krokop returning to action three weeks after his first knockout loss to the hands of Kevin Randleman. It was a workmanlike effort, and Mirko Krokop and Hiromitsu Kanahara, and there is a great act of sportsmanship on the part of Kanahara, giving Krokop one of his team's shirts, and Kanahara winning over some fans here tonight, no doubt about that surviving 15 minutes with this man here, Mirko Krokop, and it'll be interesting to see the next step he takes as he tries to earn his way back into title contention. First thing that's... Action! Action! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, my friend. My pleasure. It's a pleasure to be with you guys here again. And so the first thing the fans would like to know is what happened to you? We see some crutches over here. Well, unfortunately, my last uh, fight, uh, fight on Pride Bushido, I had an uh, ACL torn and I had a replacement, and then I was having some fun in the cities of New York. I ended up having a fight, and I, when I shot in, I broke my kneecap. So I'm gonna be like six weeks again on the cast, you know? <laughs> so we can expect to see you back after six weeks? I believe after like at least six months, I think, to I heal this thing, yeah. A little good vacation, eating candy, and having a lot of funny times with my wife. <laughs> how, does it, how does it feel to um, have the Gracie name? and? Um, be the soul, instead of having a country behind you, be the soul for the people that are representing It's like, it's like, it's like uh, Johnny Cash used to say, it's like being a, a boy named Sue, you know? You better be tough. Or <laughs> you get tough or you die with that name, you know? <laughs> you're the coach this time of Team Gracie. Yes. So you're going to be in the corner and you're not going to have any control over what goes on out there like you do as yeah, a fighter. That's, which is tougher for you? It's much tougher to be in the corner for the fact that for the fact that I have no control. Like, it's, I believe that's where I'm gonna get the gray hairs, by sitting there. Like, I, I, I'm 37 now and I don't have one gray hair in my head. And I don't dye my hair, though. <laughs> but I, I believe that's where I'm gonna get. It's like, it's more not, mo much more nerve-wracking to be in the corner, to be watching them than actually to be in the ring. I would, I would, like, it's like, right now, you guys don't realize, but my brother here, he's shaking like crazy. If he was fighting, he wouldn't be nervous, but he's interviewing. <laughs> he's out of his mind right now here. You guys can see it though. I can feel it. <laughs> so it's the same thing for me. It's like when I sit in the corner, it's not what I'm, not, it's not what I'm used to do. So I go nuts. <laughs> this is just to relax him a little. <laughs> You have my brother high that it's unpredictable. You never know what he can do or what, in which direction he can go. It can be from hitting the ref to the jumping in the crowd. You, you never know. It's always a surprise. You have Half, one of the most intense guys I have ever seen in my life. And you have Ricardo, one of the most dedicated guys in terms of training and, and getting ready. It's like I wish I had his dedication. It's been a long time since I've seen someone in his condition, his physical condition. And how it's the toughest guy I have ever seen in my life. It's like, you're gonna, you're gonna go all around the globe and you can, you can find someone like him, but never more than him. And me, on the corner, the best looking Brazilian guy that you can find, so it's the perfect team. I believe he's a very tough guy. I had a chance to meet him, he's a great guy, great fighter, we respect him a lot. And I believe it's going to be a battle because the intensity that he brings in the ring is amazing. So it's, it's going to be a battle to see such, a, such intense guys, him and Haya, going at each other. Like, and uh, the, the advantage I have the best seat in the house, I'll be sitting right on the corner watching very close and personal right there. I intend to come out front to show what I have been studying my whole life under Hanzo, which is Gracie Jiu Jitsu. I'm not going to make it a war. I'm going to be like water. Whatever he does, I'm going to mold it to him 
and uh, I'm gonna go for the submission. I know he's a good fighter. Uh, he fought a lot of people. I wanna fight him. And put in Bushido. You know, Bushido is my place. And against Gomi, is your game plan gonna be any different? Uh, I plan to, to do some well against Gomi. I'm really looking forward to 3-0 on this one. Yeah, yeah. It's like three unbelievable guys, and I, I can't see it any other way. We are the Graces. Here we come. Again. Yeah. Japan, Bushido, Volume 3. It's time for Team Japan versus Team Gracie. Ricardo, Big Dog, Almeida, 27, 6 feet tall, 185 pounds, 1 and 0 in pride. And there you see Rio Chonan, 27, 5'9, 185 pounds, making his debut in pride tonight. This will be a best of three series. Almeida, of course, a Gracie black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. In his last fight, beating Nathan Marquardt via Guy Team Choke in the first round. At Pancrase Hybrid, 10 last November for that promotion's middleweight championship. He has been on a tear in that organization at 5 and 0. Watch for the Japanese hurricane to come out like a hurricane. He promised us that. Shonan very confident. He said he's going to serve notice that he will be a force to be reckoned with here in Pride. Facing a tough test in Almeida. A supreme ground specialist. Good low kick. Almeida nice answering kick. With, a, with an even better low kick. Shot by Almeida. Yeah, watch, he's going to push him into the ropes. So he's got one underhook. And he's starting to fight for the other underhook here. He's got the glove just a little way through. Jonan giving Almeida all kinds oh, of inside trip. Respect saying he has no weaknesses he's got, whatsoever. He's reaching down into the crotch here to try to elevate him, but uh, it's not going to work. They jockey along the ropes again. Looking for dominant position. Referee calling for action. Almeida. And Chonan both in great condition. Almeida trying to good power balance, play. Good balance by Chonan. Almeida's got a tight lock on here, but uh, so far Chonan's been able to keep his balance very well. In Almeida's corner is his coach, Henzo Gracie, as well as Martin Rooney. For Chonan, the likes of Hidehiko Yoshida are in his corner. So a great corner, two great fighters kicking off Team Japan versus Team Gracie here at Bushido 3. Shonen trying to play a little game with his eyes there, looking down at the legs, then throwing the punch. Interesting Good low kick. Almeida, very happy staying in the stand-up right now. Busy, bobbing and weaving. Shonen setting some up. Nice low, low kick, kick there by Almeida. Shonen now taking it to Almeida, doing a good job of avoiding it. Shonen likes to throw the left leg kick inside and then go high with it. Gotta get his timing here is Almeida. Almeida's got a little reach advantage here, which he's he's using fairly well, keeping the jab out. Three inches taller than Chonan, both weighing 185 pounds. Nice kick oh. there by Chonan. Looks like those kicks are starting to hurt. Now, if Chonan's smart, oh, nice goes. overcut right. by Chonan, but right away into the single leg attempt by Almeida, but Chonan doing a good job on top to avoid the takedown. Almeida finally secures the single leg, but man, great balance being displayed here by Chonan. Great Jonan. balance, great balance, and he was very smart in that he hurt him. Oh, the oh there's the takedown. Now he's in side position. Now this could be trouble. Almeida's excellent on the ground. He's got the knee right on. They're going to go back to the center. And Almeida, having an opponent on the canvas, is like Picasso working on a canvas. This guy is simply an artist when it comes to ground fighting. He, he is. He, he is one of the best and most explosive guys down there with submissions. Now, the, the knee's no longer on the stomach. Yeah, we'll see him put it back on. There it is. And he's going to push the head down, extend extend up, so it makes it harder for Chonan. Oh, he just Lies moved himself right into right the top in the position. <laughs> that was uh, interesting. 
No, he may, he may just drop his shoulder down onto Chonin's head. Okay, now he's pushing pushing down. It's gonna make it hard for Chonin to breathe. Chonin remaining active underneath there, trying to buck. They made off, but now I made underneath the arm with those punches and a flurry of strikes here, Matt. He's punching through the holes, through the openings. Uh, Chonin's starting to bridge. But uh, Almeida's got good posts that, that keep him from tipping over, using There's his the legs. armor. They're wing blocked by uh, Jonan, but uh, Almeida now posturing up. Little ground and pound from Almeida. Those are good shots. Those are good shots, but Jonan's fine right now. Um, Jonan with a strike from the bottom. Yeah, he's... Doing a good job of blocking. Oh, but uh, like you say, Almeida fighting those, the holes. Those are good. He's picking okay. the shots. Okay, he turned over and he gave him the back. That's, Here comes the that's trouble. Which in Portuguese, of course, is the Mata Leon. The lion kill from Brazil. But look at Jonan. Jonan doing a good well, job of defending here. Okay, now that he's turned over here, we'll see if he goes to the figure four on the body. Oh, he's going to come. Oh, side choke. Side choke. And he may dismount here now that he's got it, but he doesn't. Well, he's grabbed really the bicep. He's, it now. he's really tight with it. Man, is Jonan no action. Very busy on the bottom, desperately trying to escape is Chonin, but look at this joke by Almeida. But he's a little high, his head's a little oh, high. Nice sweep there by he, can, he can still choke him from that position. But a great but he, job there by Chonin. He needs Chonin. to be a little higher. Chonin, Chonin's okay. Awesome job by Chonin to escape oh, that very escape. dangerous joke. So you can see what toll it took on him as his face now just returns to a normal color. Now, Jonan. Okay, now watch this. The leg's coming up high. Right here. He's, yeah, he, he's looking for the omoplata or to the triangle when he pulls his head out. Great fight thus far between Jonan and Almeida. Oh, watch for the up kick. And there's oh, a nice jump. Good stop. Good stop. And now going go. the legs. Oh, watch the heel hook there. Watch the heel hook. The heel's exposed right there on Almeida. Almeida not going for the legs of Chonin. There's the heel hook. It's on. Oh, it slipped out. It slipped out. And now Almeida. Okay, now Almeida's on top. Almeida's in a good position right now. If he can slide his leg out of there, he'll be in crossbody position or side position. Tremendous. And now first he's going to go right to mount. Almeida and right Chonan. To mount. Almeida in the top position right now, and what a great match it's been thus far. Almeida, though, I would have expected him to be a little more busy on top, a little more nice. active. Oh. Now there's a stomp. Nice attempt at a stomp. I thought he'd be going for more submission attempts, but he's uh, content to just well, get up from the guard. He's done well with his submission attempts. He, uh, you have to position first, and Almeida knows the ABCs. He uh, goes for, he's going to pass guard here first. Jonan doing a great job of defending, though, however. He, he's doing great. He's, this is a good fight. Both of them have expended a lot of energy here, but there you go. There's, There's the, the pass. Now, now he's set it up so he can strike. They're at the road. Now he's got the arm bar. He's now going for the, the arm bar. Now, now turns it into a rear naked choke attempt. No, it's got the back of Chonan, but Chonan doing a great job of avoiding danger when Almeida is in dominant position. He's doing well at defending the submissions. Almeida knows not to overextend himself when he doesn't have it fully also. He knows not to waste his waste his energy when he's uh, not got the submission in the right place. Jonan doing the right thing there every time he attempts to choke, turning his face to the side, not allowing him to secure his arm underneath the chin. Now what Jonan needs to do is he needs to get the hook out. One hook came out, but now they're back in. If Jonan could get that hook off and keep on made on his hip, he can come on top. To ride him. Now he's got him back into full mount. Both taking, both taking a little rest here, and you can't blame him for that. They've been well, working real hard. Referee won't good, shoulder, good shoulder drop Want there. that for too long. And Almeida now, great job again of bucking the hip by Chonan. Now he's giving him his back, however. Enzo Gracie shouting out encouragement now, to Almeida. Now Almeida's got his head down. That means that he wants to continue to try to take the back. If uh, Chonin turns, Almeida's going to slide right underneath the back and get a better position. Now his head's up, so he may just go right back to mount if Chonin turns. Yeah, he's, he's looking. Since, since his, oh, there he goes. Got the hooks in still, and now Almeida high up. If he can stretch him out, back position. he can go for a short choke. But right now Almeida's hips are, are up. 
A tremendous job of defending the submission I'm attempts. Holding the glove. Being done here by Rio Chona and making his glove. debut in Pride. We've seen Ricardo Almeida. Pride 12 when he beat veteran Akira Shoji, who was victorious earlier tonight in his 20th appearance in Pride. Almeida's really working, uh, going from the rear choke back to the side choke, but uh, Jonah's so really aware of it, and he's, uh, he's defending it well. at all. And now, Jonan forcing Almeida to his feet in the bus coup position. Now Almeida comes through with the right hand. Almeida is the aggressive, but Jonan doing a good job of defending and uh, even countering at times. Good guard pass there. He he brought the legs up. Oh, the half guard now. And now looks now like watch out, watch out, for the Kimura. watch out, watch out because he can also get set up for an armbar himself. But the ropes are in the way. If Almeida was to spin around the head to Almeida's left, he can get an armbar. But the ropes are in the way, as I said right now. Uh, uh, he's going to try to pass the guard to that side. He wants to keep moving that direction. Raining down some shots to the body is uh, Ricardo Almeida. He's in half guard. You'll see him pass either to mount. Some big shot strikes there by Almeida. Back to his feet again. Now watch the pressure in. Okay, he's down in, he's down in full guard now. You see him posture up when he wants to pass. Right there from Chonan. Okay, now he's, he's not. Nice up kick those, by Chonan. He, he's going to move those ankles past. Nice up kick again by Chonan. Doing a great job of defending here. There's a stomp of Twox. He comes down with the right hand. Almost a flying hammer strike delivered there by Almeida. And a wonderful 10 minutes of action. And boy, oh boy, Rio Chonan, while on the bottom, looking very impressive from a defensive position. And Ricardo Big Dog Almeida. We'll have to uh, go back to his corner and see what he can come up with with an ulterior game plan when it comes to uh, trying to submit Chonan in that second round. That was a great round from both fighters. Uh, Almeida being very aggressive on the ground, Chonan defending very well. Uh, good action throughout. These guys aren't resting at all. Both guys in fantastic condition. Now, he's got the side choke attempt. He had it from the top, and now he's got it from the bottom, but his elbow is a little too far to the side. He needs it up more around the, the back, and now he's escaped it. Ricardo Almeida, one of the most cerebral fighters you'll meet, coming from a family of professors here. Matt, look at that. Just stopped by <laughs> Jonan. <laughs> nice try. That's that's what the hurricane's about. And here he almost, almost gets a heel hook. Going for the... Uh... He's, he's going for the heel hook. He's... He's gonna he's gonna hook it up here. The heel's exposed. He gets it, it right there, but it, it slips out. A yep. little bit of sweat, uh, but uh, it was a good attempt. We're talking about Almeida being very intelligent. His mother and father both professors in Brazil. His grandparents were professors. Um, very erudite individual, and uh, right now showing some of his dominant position from the top back there. Well, he Almeida is definitely a thinker, and you can see that in the way he fights. Very methodical in that opening round, but now he'll have to turn it up a notch into the second five minutes. Final round here, Bushido 3, the opening bout of Team Gracie versus Team Japan. Living up to the buzz surrounding these two fighters. Now, Chomi wanted to be in this position on his feet, and he's got his next opportunity here. Let's see what he can make out of it. And Almeida happy to engage him. Oh, oh, now there's big Conan, punches. missing with an uppercut. It's with a wild leg, single leg takedown wisely, by Almeida. Wisely going for the takedown. That, as you said, he's a thinker, and uh, he didn't stay up there where he was in danger. He brought it back down where he's very comfortable. Grace. Almeida's corner yelling out the fact that Jonan was holding the glove, which I guess is a rule infraction, Matt. It is. Yeah, a, well, there was a, almost a pass. Oh, there's a Jonan triangle going for the, Jonan, but Almeida turning the corner on it. Almeida turning the corner on it. Now he's past the guard. He's got to pull his hand out from, from the legs there, and then he'll be in a very good position. 
Who's Kevin winning this fight right now? Is it Ricardo Almeida because of the fact that he's uh, had the takedowns and the being uh, on, a top? I would say Almeida's winning the fight right now. Again, uh, the the judges keep track of time, and keep track of all sorts of But didn't we see things. Carlos Newton in a similar position against Takasa? No, that, that fight wasn't as active as this fight. No, but uh, from the ground, we saw Takase beat Carlos Newton, and uh, Rio Chonin is impressing. You can color me impressed with what he's been able to do thus far in avoiding the submission attempts. Now he can only turn at tables and try some offensive maneuvers of his own. We could uh, be in for a very close contest. <laughs> Of course, when it comes to finding out about Pride's rules, Bushida rules, information on your favorite fighters, log on to www.pridefc.com as we see Hidehiko Yoshida, who will be in action June 20th on pay-per-view at Critical Countdown. Shonen trying to turn here, but Almeida's hips are a little higher. He moves his hips really well and puts himself in mount. Almeida may be getting a little frustrated that he's not able to submit him. There he's giving the back again. Oh, Turning looks like a reverse to like a nice reverse there by Rio Chonen. They're in the corner. They're going to probably restart them in the center of the ring, the same position. It's a battle here between Chonan and Almeida. Now watch for Almeida to continue to work from the bottom here. He's, he's opened his guard up already. He's, he's trying to move backwards, get his knees across. Now he's pulling the guard high. Doing a good job of staying active as well as Chonan with a strike. Nice right hand finds its mark. He'll try to pass the guard now. Good attempt there, punching the nice elevator. He's going for a half guard sweep here. Yeah, he's Good strikes by Chonan from the top. Watch the knees. He's got the single leg, does Almeida. The sprawl by Chonan. Almeida's got himself out of some trouble here. Now he's with his strength. If he can take him down, he does. They'll restart in the center of the ring, in the same position in the close guard of Chonan. And he's coming up so that. Uh, nice off kick. Nice off kick. A double strike there by Almeida. Now becoming more aggressive. Good pass. Side control. Almeida stands up when he's in the guard so that Chonin has to actually hang from him. And that, that makes uh, the guard open up and then he drops down and it makes it easier to pass. Almeida has the, controlled this fight from an offensive position. He's got the knee right on. Now he's to the mount. But Chonin doing a great job defensively in surviving thus far. Now again gives him his back however if he can get his... Nope. Doing a good job of turning him back to his... Shonen's doing a great job at defending submissions, but he's not doing a great job at defending position. But Almeida's dominating position, dominating on passing guard, position, and, and making attempts. And he's, he's landing some strikes now. Going for the Kimura. It, it was wise of Shonen to continue to turn there so he didn't get the arm up with him. Another yeah. reversal by Shonen. We've seen that on more than one occasion. And now it's Almeida, though, working from the bottom, as you alluded to, Matt, looking for the look at this, Nice, look at this. beautiful job by Chonin, showing some of his power. He's bringing that leg up high. If he can get it over the top there, then he can go for the arm bar or the triangle. Constant action here between Ricardo Almeida and Rio Chonin. Oh, okay, watch out. He's very dangerous with this guillotine. You hear his corner yelling, Kashahan, that means big dog in Portuguese. That's uh, Almeida's name. Jordan's biggest victory was when he knocked out Hayato Maha Sakurai, factoring his orbit. This fight is over. He knocked Sakurai out of our first Bushido event to earn himself a shot here in Pride. And uh, he survived the battle with Ricardo Almeida. They'll go to the judge's decision. And... Um, Matt, uh, I guess you think uh, Almeida will take this one. I think Almeida will take this one, but you know what? Chonin fought very well. He's, he's a very tough fighter.
There's, he's trying a half guard sweep, but uh, Chonin backed out of it very well. He didn't keep his hips elevated. He's, he's a smart fighter. Jose Sirio Chonan in his corner, Hidehiko Yoshida, involved in that return grudge match with Hoist Gracie New Year's Eve at Shockwave 2003. That DVD and all the Pride DVDs available at pridefc.com. Shadow. Jeff Ohashi. Shadow. A unanimous decision victory for Ricardo Big Dog Almeida. Dominating position, as you said, Matt, but again, a, a great performance defensively for Chonan. Uh, unfortunately, unable to secure any dominant position, and when he did have it, Almeida was uh, you yeah, know, not, smart on the ground. Almeida, Almeida dominated this fight and put it, put it where he's best. But, uh, Will he be happy credit, with his performance, Almeida? Well, did he? I, Al Almeida, you know, he's a perfectionist, I think. When he grapples, he's a perfectionist, and uh, he did a great job. Um, I'm sure Hinzel will be happy, but uh, Almeida probably will not be happy unless he submits his opponent. Okay, Rio Chonan there, losing his debut, but I think winning some fans over here at Pride. As Ricardo Almeida now showing his respect to the Pride ring, to his uh, coach, Henzo Gracie. Just an overall incredible human being is the big dog, Ricardo Almeida. Victorious here and drawing first blood for Team Gracie against Team Japan in this best of three series. The Pitbull is 32, 5'9", 162 pounds, winning his pride debut over Dokon Jonsuke Mishima at Bushido 1. Gomi, 25, 5'8", 163 pounds, also 1-0 in pride, and we told you about his victory over Jadson Costa. An interesting side note here is that uh, Gomi's only recent loss was to BJ Penn, and uh, Half Gracie was the first instructor of BJ Penn, so this may really mean something to Gomi. Takadori Gomi and Half Gracie. See the focus on the face of Gracie, the intensity written all over. Oh, that looked like it hurt Half. Half is done. Half is done in electrifying fashion. And just like that, Takanori Gomi stops the undefeated streak of the pitbull Half Gracie. And Gomi at six seconds defeats Half Gracie and ties up this best of three series at one win apiece. Devastating, to say the least. Takanori Gomi electrifies the crowd of the Yokohama Arena as he vanquishes Hal Gracie, Matt Hume. What happened? Wow, that, that was incredible. That was not expected to have that over that quick. Hal charged forward, Gomi through the knee, Hal ran right into it. <laughs> In stunning fashion, it took only six seconds. Gomi, here we go. Matt. Now you watch how charge. Gomi throws the knee, connects. It's over. And that's it. There's a few more knees in. And Half goes out just for that a second there. First knee, but that's enough. Him out and down. Um, here we go with Takanori Gomi on the microphone. I think a speech is going to last longer than the fight. Well, maybe not. The microphone might not work. He's, he's happy. He's jubilant. Unfortunately, there is a chagrined, very disappointed Half Gracie. He doesn't even know 
unfortunately, he's he's going to have to get checked out because uh, he took a vicious knee to the head, and you can see that he still has some effects of that shot. Um, come on. He has just screamed out that he's the best. うれしいっていうことで、すごく、え、今回スタッフの方にいろいろ迷惑かけて、え、なんとかリングが上がれたんですけど、え、今の自分があるのは本当に格闘技と皆さんのおかげなので、え、リングが上がる前は苦しいです